to see yourself at the feet of Jesus. Just let His love just hover and permeate in this place today. Oh, we worship You, Lord. We worship You. We honor You, Jesus. You inhabit the praises of Your people, God. Your glory comes down on earth, Father. We thank You for heavenly realms on earth. Hallelujah. We thank You for the kingdom of God. This moving in this place. We thank You for the weighty glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Let it rest on us today, God. Let it work in us. Let it change us. Let it minister to us. We open our arms and our hearts to You today, Father. Shh. Shh. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord. We worship You, Heavenly Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord. You're so glorious. You're so glorious. You are so glorious. You're glorious. <laughs> oh, fill the room, God. Fill the room with your glory, Lord. Fill the room with your glory, God. <clears throat> fill the room with your glory. <clears throat> Just receive from the glory of heaven right now. Let it come on you. Let it come in you. Shoo. <laughs> oh! Cry out for His glory. His glory in your city. His glory in your family. His glory in your job. Hallelujah! The glory in our families, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there was just a heavy glory here last night in the meeting. Just kind of sat on us. I don't know if you sensed it or not, those of you who are here, but there was just a heaviness of the glory of God just sitting on us last night. God reveals His glory so He can demonstrate and manifest His power of whatever the need is in your life, whatever the need is for the current season, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His glory's in here for a shifting in your life. For the shifting, He's removing, He's removing even relationships and things and bringing new relationships in for this season that we've entered into. Father, we welcome Your glory, Lord, in our lives. Without Your glory, we have no clue. We have nothing. Without Your presence, God. Oh, we breathe in Your glory, Lord. The glory of the Lord fill the temple. Let your glory. Oh, shaka barada basa, karada barada basa. It's a heavenly moment right now. It's just his presence, his love. Jesus. 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 <laughs> oh, Shakarabasa, Tarabasha, Karabondo. <laughs> mm. 
Your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The fire of God is in this building right now. I don't know if you f I actually feel it on my skin. Thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost to purge and to cleanse, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. For your glory, Lord. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I will live. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> She cobre beshe ki elama ase tele bosti ki vishe karala meste. 
Vigele me esi ki brebe se ki ve ishte ko umbre masa va andola bo oseke. Shama ambro bo se ki elema osete eshi kaba afaste te lema asondo. Geve le bo si ke te dibisti. Telemo ko si kavraba asava ande le be se ke te ishta kava. Te vende le bo se ki ashata le bo ste. Vende le be si. Is dad in here? I don't know. Pastor Tom, do you have that? For in this day as you walk with me, as you walk by faith, not by sight, as you walk in the glory and the spirit of might, as you walk with me, and I begin to visit mankind, as I have said in my word, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And you'll begin to see the glory of the Lord increase and increase and increase a little bit more here and increase a little bit more there. And increase a little bit more in this service. And increase a little bit more at your, your house. And increase a little bit more as you walk and you pray in the Spirit. And increase a little bit more in the church of God. And increase a little bit more in the political system. And increase a little bit more in the house of God. And increase a little bit more in the house of God. And increase a little bit more in the house of God. As you worship me, you will see the things that I've wanted to do for so long but my people have not yielded to. You'll begin to see a greater and greater dimension of my power than you've ever seen before. It's now. It's in this season. So get ready for it because the Lord says it's here now. <clears throat> give another. Give another message. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shikobra bava esti ki mi isto frebe se ki eshalama afando rebe se ki alama asepe esto frebingi stika me vle me si ki ke le boho se te hi ki lama hastoto. Ye ke le me esi ki vundo ste fe for you and me. She kama ando vrebese ki. And as that increases, and as it increases, you'll begin to see the altars begin to fill up with those that are seeking more, and I'll fill their cup. And as they get down on their knees and they begin to cry out to me, joy will rise in their hearts, and they'll begin to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them, it's the first time in their life they ever were really able to laugh. And they'll say, <laughs> because the joy of the Lord is their strength. And joy will be poured out. And you will see it in the house of God. Yes, you'll see it because this is the time and this is the season. No longer will you have to wait. It's here now. It's here now. It's here now. It's for us now. It's here now. So by faith enter in, expect, and God will do what he said he will do. Hallelujah. Stand up, give him praise. Come on. When God speaks, we need to be giving praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, shibra ba 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 sombron kote abatonda. Esombren be shibra ba kote bele masonda. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Woo! Got mama shibra. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Woo. Shoot. Give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Pray, 
Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on and give him praise. Shh. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Can I do something? <laughs> Where's Pastor John? Is he here? I want to clear this. All right. You guys. You guys. You guys. You guys. Come here. Your whole family. Lord says you've been going through some really rough water. Difficult times, but I come against that demonic power that has come against you and your family in Jesus' name, and I break the power of that thing now, and in Jesus' name, the joy of the Lord will hit your house. Things will begin to change. Things will begin to change. Things will begin to change because the Lord said now it's beginning to change, and the things will not be the same, and you will, hallelujah, you will obey me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Get him drunk in the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's give him some praise. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. I'm telling you right now, things are changing for this family. No more will that devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I think we all just need to laugh a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah, Bonner. <laughs> Love you, man. Hallelujah. Our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. And then it goes on to say, and we are glad. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Don't you just feel the anointing of God, the, the glory of the Lord? The fire of God. It's like he's manifesting in many different ways in this place this morning. I don't know whether to weep, laugh, fall on the floor, shake, bake, cook, whatever. I don't even know. <laughs> Amen. God is so holy, isn't he? And he loves you. He loves you, Pastor Bob. The devil is a liar. Amen. 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 Let's just stay hooked in the glory this morning. Amen, Mom. Just come on up here. We're going to receive our offering this morning. And uh, then Pastor Warren is going to come up and teach, preach, whatever the, the Holy Spirit wants to do. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me over to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. I've been in this area because I've been asking the Lord to teach me how to rest. And... Um, uh, sometimes that's a hard thing to do in a busy world that we live in. But, you know, it's in those times of rest that you can hear with clarity the voice of God in your life. And, uh, and so uh, he began to talk to me here a few years ago, and he said, he said, I want you to stay hot. And I said, well, God, that's my full intention. <laughs> and he says, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. He said, I want you to stay hot, H-O-T, humble, obedient, and teachable. Humble, obedient, and teachable. See, because when you stay in that position, there's a grace that comes on you that no matter what is happening in your life, what is happening in the circumstances of your life, you stay in rest. You stay in peace. You stay humble. You stay obedient. And you stay teachable. The Bible says that, it's, he says, submit to God, resist the devil, Everybody always wants to say, resist the devil and he'll flee. Resist it. But you, if you're not submitting to God, see, you're the mere act of you submitting to God and his voice in your life, 
the, that, that act that of, of um, submitting to God is resisting the devil. How do you think you're going to resist the devil if you're not submitted to God? See, God has patterns. God has, has uh, if you want to use the word formulas, it doesn't matter, but he has, he has ways in, he teaches us in his word how to defeat the devil, how, how to enforce the defeat, I should say, because he's already defeated. See, when you understand that, the devil is already defeated in your life. And the and only thing he can come against you with is lies and deception, smoke and mirrors. But it says here in, in 1 Peter 5, uh, it, it talks about in, in verse 5, it says, Likewise, ye younger, younger, he just got through speaking to the elders about being submitted to God and doing what God's told him to do. And he says, Likewise, younger pe- the, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive one to another and be clothed with humility. For, <laughs> conjunction, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. You want to know how to get along with people? Stay humble. Because that's where the grace is. Amen? Praise God. It says, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty, powerful hand of God, that he may, that means he might not, but that he may, he might not because you're not submitted he can't help you amen at least to the full extent that you need it says under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you or lift you higher than your circumstances lift you into victory how, and how do you do that verse 7 says it casting all of your care on him because he cares for you I like the message. It says, live carefree before God because he's most careful with you. Hallelujah. But the Amplified says this, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. God's, God's timing is always perfect and his ways are always perfect. Casting all your care. Now, listen. Your anxiety, all your worries, and all your concerns. I don't know about you, but there's times that I have to do that four, five times, six, seven, eight times a day. No, I won't carry that care. I refuse to bear in my body what Jesus already bore for me. Amen? It says, casting all your anxieties, your worries, and all of your concerns once and for all, once and for all on him. He cares about you with the deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. So if God tells you to stick $1,000 in the offering today, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Because he's looking out for you. Amen. You wondered how I was going to get that around to an offering scripture. But you see, when you ask God, you humble yourself enough to say, God, what do you want me to do in this offering? What do you want me to do? And you obey him. You humble yourself. You obey him. You're teachable. You let him teach you about your fears about money or not having money. You let him teach you. See, and, and, and when you do that, you're casting all your care upon him. And you have an awareness that he cares for you. I'll tell you what, when you got God caring for you, you got everything. Amen? So we just simply teach around here. We don't teach compulsion. We don't put pressure. We just say pray and obey. That's all we want you to do is to pray and obey. What, God, what do you want me to do in this offering? And all of our offerings are going toward our guest speakers and those that are helping us in worship and praise. And Richie Ray, who's every night with the children. <laughs> uh, what a blessing, amen? So, you know, we want to be able to bless them real good, amen? So you just pray and obey. Stay humble, obedient, and teachable. Stay hot, amen?
You can go around and say, I'm hot. <laughs> I'm humble, I'm obedient, and I'm teachable. Amen. Take your, take your offering in your hand. Father, I thank you and I praise you today. For you are the most majestic, splendorous. Oh, you're, sp oh, you're splendor, God. Woo! The glory of your presence. We worship you and we thank you with our giving. For God, you are the one that causes us to have the power to get wealth. You are the one that became poor that we might become rich. You are the one that provides for every need that we have. You are the one that rebukes the devourer for our sake. You are the one that gives us the revelation of your word. You are the one... Father, that opens the heavens over us. And so, Father, we worship you with our giving. God, we take this time just to say thank you for caring for us. Thank you for looking out for us. Thank you, Father God, for always being there for us. We worship you, Father. You are majestic. Oh, and full of splendor. And we worship your majesty and your might. For you alone are God. You alone are God, and we honor you, sir, in our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you're writing a check, you can write it out to BCM, and uh, we will make sure our speakers are blessed. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> it's awesome worship this morning. Praise the Lord. It's peaceful. Peace in here today. Um, don't forget, tonight we'll be back at 6 o'clock, and uh, Pastor Bob will be speaking tonight. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. That's at 6 tonight. Everybody say 6. Okay. And then, of course, tomorrow morning, um, uh, Pastor Tony and, and Pastor Mary Kroger from uh, Sedalia, Missouri. They'll be speaking at 9.30 tomorrow morning, and, and then um, uh, uh, Pastor Tom, the wild man from Wisconsin, one of my spiritual fathers that I love. I love Stella Moore, but just because she's way prettier. <laughs> but he'll be speaking uh, tomorrow night at uh, 6 p.m. Amen? Well, it's my pleasure to have my father-in-law and mother-in-law here this morning. Amen. Love them so much. Drove all the way down from the big town of Turlock, and uh, we're blessed to have them. And I know Pastor Warren's going to have a, a good word this morning to share. So just uh, keep your hearts open, and let's receive and ask the Lord for wisdom, revelation, knowledge from the Word. Amen. Pastor Warren, come on up, brother. Amen. Amen. Okay, am I turned on? Am I turned on? I'm green. green? Linda, somebody. Uh, Is it green? Somebody come here. Yeah, it's green. It's, it's on. It's right? On. It's on. Okay. You're just behind the speaker. That's so why you can't hear yourself. But they're on. So it's out here? Yep. I'm used to hearing myself right here in monitors, you know. Nobody raised their hand to turn me on. Hallelujah. Well, do me a favor. Do you guys do favors here? You do favors here? Stand up. Praise God. I want you to do me a favor today because um, revelation over the last few years have been coming stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm not even going to preach about this. You don't have to take up a second offering for it or anything, but... The subject matter of grace has been falling into me. And I thought maybe I was going to get to teach on it today, but I had about a half a dozen things, and it didn't come down to grace. But he's letting me have this time to say something about it. Grace is something that everybody needs to be aware of 24-7. 
no matter what kind of ability God has given you, no matter how aggressive or not you might be, how good looking or downright ugly you might be, It doesn't have anything to do with what you're going to accomplish in this earth. It's all about the grace of God. Amen. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the grace of God through Karen has now said, I can call myself hot. <laughs> Amen. Well, well, I better watch it. I better, okay. Grace, grace. Got a lot of things going in there. Everybody obedient today? You really uh, do your visiting pastor uh, a favor? Lift your hands and just start thanking God for grace. Come on, thank Him for grace. Everything you have, everything you're going to ever have, everything you're going to do, hallelujah, everything you've done has been because of grace. Thank God for His grace. Hallelujah. Thank God for His grace. Glory, 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 glory. Thank God for His grace. What did I do? Hallelujah. I've gotten used to the earpiece, so I'm not used to these lapels anymore. And if I carry one of those handhelds, I'll probably have it down here before long. So, Somebody say thank you for the grace of God. Turn around and smile at somebody and sit down. No, I just said smile at somebody. You guys are taking liberty. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about that hot thing, though. How about you? <laughs> but I did look over at my wife when I thought of that. Yeah, she's hot, praise God. She's really hot. This last month, she turned 68. Stand up, Linda. She's still a hot mama. Praise God. In 1972, Lynn and I had been dating for two years, and she finally gave me an ultimatum. And she said, Warren, we're going to get married in June or December. Which is it? <laughs> Extremely romantic, the two of us. And I looked at her because I only had two choices. I picked December. <laughs> so for others to want away because marriage was not in my thinking. And when we got married, after a few years, we wondered whether we should be married or not. And I didn't know whether I loved her. She didn't know whether I loved her. And I didn't know whether she loved me. Things that happen. I mean, oh, things can happen. This isn't costing you. This is an extra message. I came prepared today. I had a full hour just to pray in the Holy Ghost down here. Praise God. In 1972, though, but 1980, we were near divorce. In fact, we would have been divorced, but we had $90,000 bound up in property that we had not sold yet, and I didn't want to lose my half. In 1980, an evangelist by the name of David George came to my father's church, and I did not want to meet him. I didn't like church. I was very rebellious, hard-headed, had stupid in my house a lot. Still, it's an enemy of the house. Slips in every once in a while. But Linda's quick to kick stupid out now. In 1980, though, uh, I invited my dad to come to L.A. We were, uh, I'd lived in L.A. for my high school years. 
and uh, became a Dodger fan, Ram fan, all that kind of stuff. And who said amen back here? <laughs> Who's got the guts to say that? <laughs> Where I live, it's all San Francisco people. They'll get born again yet. But uh, I called my dad. He was a Dodger fan. And I said, come on to L.A., Dad. We're going to come through there, and we'll, we'll watch a Dodger game. So he said, okay. So we got tickets, and he shows up with Mom and, and this other little guy. And I'm looking at him, and I go, well, who are you, you know? Introduces me. He said, well, this is the evangelist that we have at our church. And I go, oh, Dad, I want to spend some quality time with you, you know? Preacher. <laughs> well, he started talking to me, and they put him right next to me. So I'm sitting next to Dad, put that preacher right next to me, and I look over at him, and I go, what the? And the next thing you know, he starts talking, and he talks normal like everybody else does, and wasn't religious. And I go, Phew. I got to laughing and talking with him. I couldn't believe it. I was a preacher, laughing and talking with him. And uh, all of a sudden, he prophesied a home run and pointed where it was going to go. I remember one of them was Ron Say. Anybody remember that far back? The Penguin. And uh, oh, the other one was Steve Garvey, wasn't it? Steve Garvey and Ron Say both hit the home run that day, both of them. But he prophesied that thing, so we're going. And I, I just looked at him and smiled. And the guy gets up there, and he hits a home run, and he puts it right over there. And I go, hey, wow, cool. <laughs> Game went on a little bit. We talked and laughed a while. And all of a sudden, he said, that guy right there, I think it was, say, the second one. I think it was, he hit the second one. He said, he's going to hit it right over there, out, out of the park. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know what to say because he's right first time. <laughs> and sure enough, that sucker got up there and hit a home run, and he did it right over there. And I began to go, do, 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 I don't, I don't think about God. I'm thinking Twilight Zone. <laughs> and he just started touching my life, and so I really got to liking the guy. You know how I mean? It's like, really like, like I'm in a preacher. I got to liking a preacher. That was just unreal of in my day. And uh, Dad invited me naturally to church. And I wasn't going to go because I, you know, I went once to twice a year, Christmas and occasionally Easter. Dad, I'm back here in the back row. See me? Okay. <laughs> and uh, he invited me to this evangelist meeting. And so... Lynn and I, we finally went. And that guy got up there preaching a word like I'd never heard before. It wasn't one of those salvation messages. It was just the uncompromised word of God. And I sat there and listened. And I looked at Lynn. I said, well, I've never heard anything like this. And he had authority. He had power. I'm sitting there kind of going, yeah. You know, like Gomer Pyle. Yeah, oh, honey. <laughs> Well, you married me. You got to put up with me, amen. <laughs> but in 1980, uh, she and I were fighting a lot, saying words to each other we shouldn't say. Anybody ever done that? Well, stop it right now and kick stupid out of your house. But anyway, we were saying things, and that night um, we were just blowing up. We were still sleeping in the same bed. I don't know how we did it, but we were still a queen-size bed, too, and just sleeping there. But I felt like rolling over and just grabbing hold of her throat and seeing how long I could hold it before she stopped breathing. <laughs> and I think she felt the same way. And we were saying things to us. And to this day, other than the fact that the impression of that little evangelist was on me, right in the middle of us really firing on each other. I was laying in bed, and I mean, both of us do, and all of a sudden something happened. And I looked over at Linda, and I said, well, I guess we need Linda. And Linda was still mad. She said, well, brother, we need something. What did I say? 
Did I say, oh, well, I did need Linda. I, I looked over and I said, you know, yeah, thank you. That's why I married her. I'm going to be 70 this July. Give me some slack. I'm still hot and good looking. <laughs> I told her, I said, you know, we need Jesus. And she's so mad, she said, well, we need something. And, and uh, I mean, after just a few seconds, so after saying that, something happened in that room. God filled that room up. Presence of the Holy Spirit filled that place. I had never sensed anything like I'm sitting there at times, we're both crying. We don't know why. We have no idea. Tears just rolling out of our eyes, and we're going, oh, Jesus, wow. Hallelujah. Here I am, a, pre- a rebellious preacher's kid, and I don't even know how to get saved. So about 1 o'clock in the morning, I called my dad. My mom and dad have been praying for me for years and years and years and years. And I didn't know it, so I'm going to tell you this testimony. And I, I might get to preach today, I don't know. But the testimony was that this preacher told my mother about praying for me. He said, how have you been praying for him? Lord, save him. Lord, save him. just begin to tell him. Well, have you ever said, Father, thank you for hearing me and saving him? Do you think he's deaf? Mama said, No. But I didn't know it two weeks before that she began to claim me right. into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Call me into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Oh, God, don't say, Father, thank you for saving Warren. Yeah. And she didn't call me the knucklehead that I should have been calling. And that night, I called Dad, just blow him away. He, he couldn't hardly wake up for a few mon- minutes, and then he knew that something was going on because... We were both crying and didn't know what to do. I said, Dad, we need Jesus. I couldn't hardly understand him because he had his teeth out by the table. <laughs> so I said, Dad, I can barely understand you. You know, I said, How, we, we need to get saved. I need to know what you're saying. So Pop those suckers back in. And he led Lyndon me to Jesus at 1 o'clock in the morning, 1980. I said all that just to say this. I didn't realize what a good thing I married in 1972 until after 1980. Something happened in the two of us. We actually got born again. We got saved. And I have found in my life now my best supporter, Amen. someone who stands by me even when I probably don't deserve it. Amen. And I got the hottest old woman that ever walked the earth, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, why I told you all that, I haven't the slightest idea, but it was in me. You know, and so I've learned that whenever something's in me, then this is for somebody out there. Somebody need to hear this today. You need to hear this. Because you can have a funky marriage right now. And if you turn your life over to God and let him get in on the scene, he can fix it. Amen. Thank you for the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Can I preach? Do I have enough time? If you get tired, you can just get up and leave, I guess. Or just leave. There's no seats. You can... Just lay down, I guess. Turn to Exodus 24. Sometimes I'm short-winded, sometimes I'm long-winded, and I just do whatever. (laughs) So, if you want to get out early, you better start praying and believe in God. Uh, As I said, I had several things I wanted to uh, share with you, but uh, this is what the Lord has brought down to me. I shared a series, a series. Uh, last month, I think began the month, about a month ago, and I entitled it "Reaching Your Maximum Potential." And so the Lord told me I, I, I'm supposed to get into that tonight. Now it's a three-part series. You guys can get it on the internet, Turlock Believers Church. 
alloneword.com, and download that if you'd like. But I want to talk to you about reaching your maximum potential. I believe with all my heart God wants us to be rooted in the Word of God and learn how to become conquerors. Learn how to believe in God and watch Him and help Him take you to higher levels of God than you've ever had before. I believe God wants you reaching your maximum potential spiritually, mentally, financially, socially, any way you can think of, God wants to lift you up. God did not call you to be the bottom. He called you to be on top. You're not to be below, you're to be above. Hallelujah. You are a conqueror. You're a winner. Amen. I have come to find out, I didn't like this at first, but I, I like it now, that reaching your maximum potential is not up to God, it's up to you. It's up to you. I wished it was all on Pastor John, but it's not. For me to reach my, for me to reach my maximum potential, it's up to me. Same thing for you. Sometimes I think we try to live off of other people. And I've come to find out it don't work. And so it's best when we find out it's just me and you, God, and boy, that's enough. We're going to do it. Praise God. Amen. Now, to help you reach your maximum potential, I want you and I to look at the life of Joshua. I've been studying Joshua for many years, and I like to get into looking at his characteristics. And I believe God wants you and I to become the Joshuas and Calebs of this generation. I really do. Now, I want you to write this down if you're writing notes because it's very important. Joshua's and Caleb's. I like to see them very equal. We know more about Joshua than what we do Caleb in the Bible. But Joshua and Caleb's never quit or give up. They never quit or give up. Even when it's odds against you are immeasurable. Even when it looks like, what was that? This is the big one, Ethel, or I don't remember what her name. What was her name? Edith or Elizabeth or something. Caleb's and Joshua's, they never quit. They don't give up. I've come to find out I'm going to win if I don't quit, if I don't give up. Now, I'm, they've got one other characteristic I want you to get. This is important. Still writing notes? They don't stand around complaining and griping and causing trouble. That's right, amen. Amen. <laughs> John, Pastor John, amen. <laughs> I'm right with you, Pastor. I think all the pastors on this front row ought to be going, amen. But Joshua's and, and Caleb's are, are men and women of fearless faith, even when they're surrounded by unbelief. Amen. Amen. All right, let's read some scripture. Ready? Exodus 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to, me, come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and the law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tear ye here for us until we come again unto you, and behold, Aaron and Ur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mount uh, uh, in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mountain. Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time. Now, if you'll notice carefully in these verses we just read, that Joshua went, went with Moses up onto the sides of the mountain, but he did not go all the way with Moses into the glory, into the presence of the manifested glory of God. He didn't go there. And as you read later on, you'll see that when Moses came down from the glory, that he then joined Joshua, who was on the side of the mountain. 
Joshua didn't know how long he was going to be there. He didn't know whether it was going to be a night or a year. But Joshua stayed there faithfully, without whining, without griping, and without complaining, with a never-quit attitude, a man of fearless faith. Amen. <laughs> Joshua had not been allowed to go up all the way with Moses into the glory in the presence of God. He stayed there all that time that Moses, within the glory of God, he just stayed there waiting on the man of God, right where God put him. But he's, as he stayed there, he noticed that down in the camp of Israel, there was a party going on. You see, time went by, and without the leadership of Moses, the children of Israel, like, like so many Christians today, uh, they, they want to party instead of following uh, the discipline of the Word of God. They just want to have a party. And this is where a lot of your churches are growing quickly is not all of them don't misunderstand me but a lot of churches that are growing quickly are because they're having shows and entertainment and all kinds of fireworks going on and something going on just you know just to appease the flesh and the senses <laughs> and that's the way a lot of the church is today I personally have been able to relate to Joshua uh, a lot. There have been times when you hear of others experiencing the glory of God, the power of God, dreams and visions and revelations of God are happening somewhere else than where you are. I, I related to that. Then you see where there's others who are going to churches that are just goofing off and having a good old-fashioned party. In other words, they have one foot in the world and one foot in God. And I find and have found myself at many times just on the side of the mountain hearing of the glory somewhere else and things manifesting somewhere else. And I look over at the other churches in the city and I see them just having a party, man. And I get to thinking, boy, you know, maybe I could get our church to grow. If I... oh, when I was in the world, I always liked a good party. And then the devil began to make it clear and plain that I could join him if I wanted to. But I began to look at Joshua and I found Joshua sitting on that mountainside where it could be very cold and very lonely for 40 days and 40 nights. No one there to tell him what to do. No one to tell him, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Forty days and forty nights he stayed there. No griping, no complaining. And I found myself being led to, to study the life of jo Joshua so that I could understand how I might be able to become a man like Joshua and a leader like him. And I wanted to study his character and I wanted to learn to develop a character such as his. And so I've been very busy, especially over the last few years just shutting myself away, meditating, reading, and studying, praying. Not blaming other people for what's going on, but just saying, if the problem is here, I know it's me and nobody else, so we're going to fix Warren. So as I've studied Joshua, I found out that he was a man, and these are very important things I'm going to share with you. He was a man of complete loyalty to God, Complete loyalty to the Word of God. And here's something that's really critical. Completely loyal to the man of God. That's powerful. He also knew where he belonged was where God wanted him to be. And so he learned to stand faithfully in that position without whining, without griping, and without complaining. He was not in the full glory of God, and he wasn't down in the camp receiving attention through the party. And I've come to find out that as we obey God, <laughs> we don't always have every day the glory of God, angels appearing, miracles, signs, and wonders happening all the time. 
sometimes because of your stand of faithfulness, to be where God wants you to be, you can actually feel. Everybody say feel. You can actually feel all alone. Just feel like, man, did anybody believe like I did? Did anybody really believe the Bible? And in these times of loneliness, I have learned, as Joshua learned, I've learned something. Loyalty, obedience, patience, praise God. And I've learned to follow God and his word and not to follow my feelings or my emotions. How many besides me have feelings and emotions? I'm going to ask one more time. How many of you in here have feelings and emotions? If you're still breathing... I expected to see a hand. We all have feelings and emotions, right? Here's what I want you to get. Pay attention to the word and let the word help you control your feelings and emotions. Feelings and emotions have been given to us by God. But if you don't control them by the word of God, they'll mess you up. They'll take you to discouragement. They'll take you to depression. They'll take you to defeat. They'll take you to whining city. Griping and complaining. Well, I know if I was a praise leader, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, the rest of us are all, I'm so glad you're not. (laughs) Praise and worship. You see what I'm saying? Those kind of thoughts come from people who've never taken the word and controlled their feelings and emotions. Did you know that there's people in this world that actually think they're better than others? And here's, I got a word for you, ready? Can I be playing with you? Look, you goofball, go look in the mirror. You know good and well you're not perfect. What are you doing judging what's going on in a local church? Here's what I found out. No matter what church it is God puts you in, go with the flow. Don't cause trouble. Don't talk about the anointed ones. The anointed ones probably know more than you ever forgot. I mean, they know it, what they're doing. If you don't like the songs they're singing, well, very possibly you shouldn't be there. So if you shouldn't be here, that's what I tell people in my church, you know. If you don't feel like you're supposed to be here, then get out of here. Please. Don't let that door hit that backside going out. Either just hook it on out of here if you don't believe you're supposed to be here. The best thing for you to do is bless the church where you are and get yourself out and go find where you're supposed to be. Amen. Well, I'm preaching good whether some of you all know that or not. So I get some holy stares out there. That's okay, I'm used to them, but don't bother. Now, one of the things that has caught my attention about Joshua is Joshua stayed where he belonged. He didn't run to the comfort of the camp, nor did he try to exalt himself up where he didn't belong. That's how that happens a lot. Churches. People want to, well, I want to do this, I want to do that. Well, okay. Thank you for telling me. Now let me pray about it. At our church. If somebody bugs me all the time, 99.9, if not 100% of the time, they ain't going to do it if they keep bugging me about it. Because then I take them aside and I explain to them why. Here's what I want, bud. I want God to exalt you. I don't want you to exalt yourself. If you're supposed to be there, I know you want to be there now. Let me go pray about it. And if I get it, then I'll just bring you right in and be so happy to do it. If not, you just sit where you are and be happy. You, you, you should watch. You should watch your facial expressions. <laughs> I'm doing this for Pastor, you know, just in case he doesn't talk to you like this. But if you go to my church, you find me talking to him like this. But he stayed on that mountainside. Joshua did, content in God, not complacent, but content, staying where he belonged in complete loyalty, obedience patience, and content to be where God wanted him to be. Turn to Joshua 5. 
Still with me? Sometimes we need to be content to serve God right where we are. Now listen closely until God changes it, not when we change it. That's when we get into trouble. Sometimes we just have to be faithful where we are instead of sitting around asking why and griping and complaining all the time. (laughs) And we have to stop letting the enemy talk to us and bring us back down from the mountainsides into the camp where the party is. Can we pause? Listen to me very closely. I really believe this. I believe every one of us need some mountainside time where you don't have anybody influencing you but God and his word nothing else I've gone through two years now of just shutting everybody and everything off I don't even go down the office anymore because I don't, I don't want to see people I told God one day you know pastoring would be great if it wasn't for the people <laughs> and then he spoke over it wasn't for the people you wouldn't be there dummy <laughs> oh so there has to be something worked out here but the people in the church know what I'm doing they're knowing that I, 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 I need to have time alone with God to fix Warren I've come to Revelation since 1980 I've learned and grown in the Lord but God's not through with me and I'm kind of excited about it because I've received a word and, you know, I get words and sometimes they go in one ear and out the other. But when they stop, that means it bore witness with me and I pay attention to it. And one of the words that came to me was, my latter years are going to be greater than my former. Amen. I'm just barely slipping over into my latter years. And so I'm expecting my latter years to be greater and I'm expecting a greater boldness in me than I've ever had before. God is taking away from me something that hindered me and that was the fear of people. I don't have the fear of people anymore. I talk like this at my church and there's been a lot of them hit the door. But they can hit the door because I'm going to tell you the truth. We've got to walk the word of God and not walk by emotions and feelings. And we're going to have to believe God for this end time revival that is coming. It's coming and it is upon us. We are going to see some mighty powerful things. But it won't happen in a church that's got junk going on. Amen. I wish everybody was here today. So I could preach this honorary to all of them. Praise God. <laughs> Joshua, just give this tape to everybody you know needs it. Joshua was faithful. He was loyal. He was patient. He was obedient. Obedient. He would not or he would never compromise his standing with God to raise himself up where he wasn't supposed to be. Or allow himself to be lowered down from the slopes, down into the camp where the party is. Nobody knew that Joshua would become the leader of Israel and the one to bring God's people into the promised land. Nobody knew that. I got a word for you, ready? No one may know BCM, the Believer's Church of Madero. Nobody may know what God has planned for them. That means you, in case you didn't figure that out. There may be people that say, don't even know you, don't even know what's going to go on, but God does. God knows. And I know God wants you to learn something this, this, this day, and that is this. I've got to learn to become loyal. I've got to become faithful. I've got to be committed. I've got to be patient. I've got to be obedient and learn to become the Joshua's and Caleb's of this generation. That's what God wants out of you. I'm getting some holy nods. How about a big amen? Amen. I don't move very well with holy nods. 
God, God told me a while back that what I will get from people is what I preach. And so I've been preaching a lot on Joshua and Caleb on a regular basis. And it's so that those who hear me, they can receive me as their man of God to minister the word to their hearts, that they will grab hold of these words and become the Joshua's and Caleb's of our generation in our area. I'm saying today that you guys are going to become the Joshua's and Caleb's in the Madera area. And don't limit yourself to Madera. Amen. Joshua's and Caleb's of this generation, though, we are to bring the body of Christ, now listen to me, from the grasshopper stage to the conquering stage. Under Moses, the children of Israel had a grasshopper mentality. Everyone was greater than them. Everyone was mightier than them. Oh, woe is me. We would have been better off bearing slavery than here with God in the freaking wilderness. But in Joshua's army, they came from the grasshopper stage to the conquering stage. And they overcame the giants that were in the land. And I believe with all my heart, this is what God has for your future. That you've come to the conquering age. Amen. Everybody say, I'm a conqueror. Did, you turn, did I tell you John, Joshua 5? Good, 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 good. Look at one verse, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off of you. This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Now, I heard this definition back in the early 80s. And I've not been able to find a better definition for the reproach of Egypt. And here it is. A slavery mentality. He said, this day have I rolled away from you the slavery mentality of Egypt from off of you. All the the children of Israel knew in their minds was to serve, serve Egypt and not God. And I'm talking about physically, mentally, spiritually, any way that you can think. That's all they knew how to do was to serve God. And I believe the mountainside was for Joshua to learn obedience and learn to serve God physically, mentally, and spiritually. And I, even as I believe the wilderness experience was what it was for all of Israel was to learn how to become servants of God and walk with God. That's what it was about. It wasn't about the... The, the trials and difficulties and how tough it was out there. It was learned to, to fellowship with God and be with God, walk with God, let God become their God again. Oh, know Him. Who Jesus and to know Him. Hallelujah. Turn to Deuteronomy 11. I believe God would want you to learn the same things that, that Joshua did. So you can take this community for Jesus And become the Joshua's and Caleb's of your generation. That you should become visible examples of a Christ life. Amen. Christ life. (laughs) Uh, Those shouldn't be dirty words. Did, Did you hear what he said, Ethel? My God, he wants to be Christ life. The job, that's what he said. You see, I want you to get this. A slavery mentality never allows you to see yourself as God sees you. When the slavery mentality has been removed, you will be able to see yourself as God sees you. And live far above that slavery mentality. You see, that slavery mentality stops us or prevents us from being able to be what, when, and where God says we are to be and what we are to be and when we are to be. Deuteronomy 11, let's read some verses. Take heed to your, how many like to read? Anybody besides me? Everybody say, I like to read the Bible. Bible. Come on, say it again. I like to read the Bible. Bible. Well, then do it. Take heed to yourselves that your hearts be not deceived. 
and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and you shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless you perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall you lay up these words of, in, of mine in your heart and in your soul, bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lay down, when you rise up. I believe that covers it. And thou shalt write them on the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates that your days may be multiplied, that the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourself. Every place where the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness of and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, and even the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Somebody say amen. 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 I want you to notice verse 21. It says that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as days of heaven upon the earth. Praise God. This funky low life that we've been living, man, that's not days of heaven. You know, there's been a teaching in the body of Christ that's just been sad. It's from the pit of hell. Well, in order to be holy and sanctified, you've got to be poor and living in poverty. And we've had contests of who's, who's the poorest. I'm the poorest of the poor, the weakest of the weak. Are you still here? God wants you to have days of heaven upon the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lynn and I have learned that we have made God our source and not the church, not people. God is our source. And things come into our house supernaturally now. Supernaturally. <laughs> we had an offering one time, and it wasn't even enough to take Linda to McDonald's. We looked at that offering, and the feelings and emotions tried to rise, you know. What the heck we going to do now, Linda? I don't say that to Linda anymore because she's got words to say now. She's been on the mountainside, too. What are we going to do now, Linda? Well, what was you doing yesterday, Warren? Well, I was believing God I seen that offering. Well, then now you need to believe God more than you ever did. And so we started doing that. We see the little offerings. He just go laughing. We go, praise God, hallelujah. And I mean, supernatural things begin to happen. For, for two years now, the church has not been able to sustain our ministry. But God has. <laughs> God has. And I come to find out I'm not working for TBC. I'm working for God Incorporated. Hallelujah. TBC may not have the money, but God Incorporated does. My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not by TBC. Hallelujah. Hallelujah be to Jesus. We put money in the stock market. Gone wild. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Didn't know anything about stock market. Now I do, but boy, praise God. <laughs> you say, well, is God meeting your needs according to stock market? No. It's an avenue, but it's not the only one. Things happen, and we just smile. Every once in a while, they'll surprise us. And they'll shock us, but we just sort of smile. I just knew God would take care of it. I just knew he was going to take care of it. 
Does anybody get anything yet? God promised the children of Israel days of heaven upon the earth. Hold your place here in Psalms. You still hear Psalms 89? Okay, hold your place there. Stick your finger in there if you've got a, 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 a computer like I do. Well, then you can get back there with a button. Uh, huh? Okay, that's where I want you to go. That's why. St- hold your place. See, how wonderful it is to have somebody to help you. She's a year and a half younger than me, and so that, that's necessary. Where were you at in Deuteronomy? Put your finger there and go to Psalms 89. I just glanced down at my notes and seen Psalms, and I thought that's where we were. And that's where you're supposed to be going. Hold your place there, though. We're going to go back. I believe that we're supposed to have days of heaven upon the earth because we have a better covenant than what they had. And if they were told they could have it, then bless God, we can have it. Now I want to show you just one verse, one prophetic verse that just changed my life. Psalms 89, verse 29. This is prophetic speaking of Jesus. His seed, Jesus, also will I make to endure for how long? Forever. And his throne... As the days of heaven. That blew my I mean, I really felt like it was possible that my socks might have rolled up and down. <laughs> when I got this revelation that Jesus' throne was days of heaven. Because I've read in the Bible, I'm sure you guys have read it too, that we have been raised... And seated with Christ in heavenly places, seated in his throne in him. The throne of days of heaven upon the earth. (laughs) Oh, but you don't understand. I don't make very much money. I know you don't understand. That's why I'm preaching. I want you to get your eyes off of how much money you're making. I want you to get your eyes on the word of God and just obey God with tithes and offerings and watch him start doing things with you. Creative ideas can come to you. Ingenious ideas can come to you to make money. God can just, don't, don't ever limit God. I don't limit him anyway. You know, I, I don't look for handouts. I don't ask for handouts. I, I came up here to preach just out of obedience. I didn't come up here for money. If I got nothing, I don't care. I come up here just to obey God. I asked Pastor Jay, he called me and said, would you, would you preach? I said, well, are you sure? <laughs> really? You want me to preach? I want to know for sure because if it was, well, then I knew that God had something to say to you through me. Of all people, he's going to talk to you through me. So I asked him, are you sure? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah. We, we kind of enjoyed you last time, you know. <laughs> so we'll give you one more shot. <laughs> and so... I told him I would come, though. I didn't say, well, give me time to pray about it. I told him I would come. You want to know why? I've been on a mountainside, and he's my pastor. And if he asks me to do something, I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to go do it. So when I hung up the phone, I had no idea what I was going to feed you guys. In fact, I felt insecure. Anybody? Yeah. Well, he did. He deserves to be insecure. I don't. No. <laughs> if you believe that, I have some things to sell you to make me some money. Yeah. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 11. Get your finger out, out of there and let's go. Now, Deuteronomy 11. We still get anything out of this? If I'm in the throne of days of heaven, 
then I have a right to live days of heaven on this earth. Now, here's the thing I want you to get hold of. Don't put it on you. Get your de faith developed in God and in His Word and put it right back on Him where He told you to in His Word. He told you to put it on Him. Put your faith on Him that He'll meet your need. Not you. Boy, I've got to come up with a way to make money. No, I don't. I don't have to be invested in the market. I don't have to be invested in this. I, I just got to have my faith working. And, 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 and where this has come from, where all I'm able to preach like I'm preaching right now has come from grace. I don't deserve anything from God. But I'm getting it because of grace. Because I believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God. I believe that He is Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And I have entered into the kingdom of God. Become a child of God. Join heirs with Jesus. And I deserve the days of heaven and earth because of what Jesus did for me. Not what Warren can do. I never push myself forward. In fact, I think I tried to share last time, my personality is just let me sit over in a corner and don't talk to me. That's my personality. Now, I can talk. I'm doing something right now, but I would rather it be under the anointing <laughs> rather than just be socially. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I'm tired of hearing you. See you later. <laughs> See, I lost about half of you right there. You guys are going to have to get over that. We're all unique and we're all different. And I'm not you and you're not me, thank God. Right? See, he's got a beard down here. I, I know I might grow a beard, but it doesn't grow right. Anyway, so I don't know. All right, now, I got to quit today, so let's keep moving. In verse 23, it says, that they would possess greater nations than them and mightier than themselves. And I believe the word of the Lord for you today is He wants to do the same with you today. God wants to stretch you beyond yourself and realize that in Christ you can go beyond your natural ability into the supernatural ability of God. Praise God. You can learn to tap into a greater ability than yours. Greater ability. Hallelujah be to Jesus. I think I've tapped into that today. In verse 25, see, I don't have the ability to teach. I really don't. I, the only thing I ever share and get across to people is just what God gives me. In verse 25, it says that God would lay the dread of their coming into the land of promise. The people that were there opposing the people of God, he said he'd, he'd, put, the, he'd put the dread of, of the people on them. Turn to Joshua 1, one real quick. Joshua 1. I truly believe that our enemy, the devil, and all of his cohorts, they dread you becoming a doer of the word. They dread it. I believe he dreads you becoming faithful to church, faithful to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on. Hey, hey. Faithful to God, faithful to the church. I might let somebody else preach Sunday morning, come down here just to say that little thing to all of you again. This is why you're attacked, though, I believe with all my heart, over and over and over by the enemy. Satan does not want you possessing whatever you tread upon. He does not want you doing that. What he wants is you whining, griping, and complaining about how tough it is instead of possessing days of heaven upon the earth. Have you got people in church? I don't, I, I've really gotten on my people enough now. They don't do it anymore. Because they know that i am got to be real sharp tongued with them. You walk up to somebody and you shake hands with them. Shake hands with me, will you please? Thank you. How you doing? Hey. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that wonderful? I saw, hey. That's wonderful. And so I just, hey. But when you go, how you doing? And then you're told, oh, man, I'm going.
Why? I just shook hands with a griper, whiner, and a complainer who doesn't know who they are in Christ Jesus, and they don't have the slightest idea how to get there. So what I do is through my messages, I try to help people get there. I want you to get there. I didn't become a pastor to get attention. I don't like it. In fact, I almost passed out the first time I got it in front of somebody. All these eyes looking at me. Uh, first thing I did was sing. You know, the Lord told me we're going to sing a special. I get up here and sing a special. And I'm holding that microphone, singing. Doing a fair job. And all of a sudden, I'm looking to all, oh, and there's about three or 400 people out there, and all of a sudden, And I'm looking at that hand, stop it. You know, inside my brain, I'm still trying to sing like crazy. I'm trying to yell out inside, stop it. It wouldn't. So after a while, I, I got through singing. And you know how the man should be courteous and wait for your wife to get up off the piano or away from the piano and let her walk ahead of you and you walk on. I put that mic down and I beelined it out of that church. I mean, just took off and went out there. <laughs> Trying to get all the air I could. Oh, Jesus. Days of heaven upon the earth. That's what he's promised you. The Lord's told me to tell you that. Days of heaven upon the earth. Joshua 1. Ready? Let's read some more. Joshua 1.1, 1, 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over the Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Sound familiar? Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this leaven, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Everybody say, He will not forsake me. He will not fail me. But be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whither, whither, whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Ooh-wee. And you don't want to read the Bible? I think we just got a good blistering for not reading the Bible right there, don't you? Verse 7, look at that. It says, be strong and courageous. To what? I'm going to I'm put it in modern vernacular. To be a doer of the word. Be strong and courageous to be a doer of the word. Why? So that you can prosper. Doers prosper. Verse 8 tells us that if we will become a doer of the word, we will make our way prosperous, and then we will have good success. This is talking about having days of heaven upon the earth, moving from the grasshopper stage to the conquering stage. Hallelujah. Nothing's greater than I am in Christ. You understand what I'm saying by that? Nothing that's presented against me is greater than I am in Christ. This takes loyalty, faithfulness, obedience to the word of God without compromise. Look at verse 11. Am I helping anybody yet? I still got about 10 minutes to hang on. Pass through the host and command the people saying... Prepare you victuals for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. This is powerful. You see, Moses could not say this to the people that were under him, under his command. Why? Because they had a slavery mentality. 
You can't possess anything if you have a slavery mentality. And the only way a slavery mentality is going to get off of you is you get it off through the Word of God. Believe it in God and in His Word, inseparable, one and the same. The Word is God and God is the Word. That's powerful. You see, the children of Israel learned, refused to learn what Joshua did. When he was on the mountainside and while he was in the wilderness. You see, I want you to get hold of this. The wilderness experience was supposed to be a time of liberty and isolation with God to worship him, to follow him, to know and to trust God and stop all this stupid whining and griping. But the children of Israel, by a mighty hand of God, were brought out of slavery to headed toward the promised land by a mighty hand. And they didn't go out broke. But yet as soon as they got out there, one tough problem and the entire group began to whine, gripe, and complain. Why? That's, that's one of the answers. Well, I want you to get this. Is I, want this in your, I want this in your brain. Slavery mentality. Amen. But what are we going to do? We only got $25 to offer them. What are we going to do? That slavery mentality, even think about what you're going to do. When I see the $25 offering, what am I going to do? Hallelujah. Praise God meets all of my needs. Hallelujah. Isn't that hilarious, Linda? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. God just tried to play a joke on me this morning. <laughs> it didn't work. Praise God. Hallelujah. My God meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory and not by those offerings. Amen. See, you all thought Pastor John lives by tithes and offerings? No. Not yours. He lives by his. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of you are getting up. Some of you about 3 o'clock this afternoon when you wake up from your nap, you'll go, my God, did you hear what he said? <laughs> Pastor John doesn't get his needs met by what comes in the church. It's by what he puts out. That's the reason why Lynn and I a while ago, we're one of the ministers that we're given to, but I thought, well, this is not going for us. This is going for one of these other guys. But we sowed seed into your guys' life today. Why? Why? Just to show the devil I don't have a slavery mentality and I want to bless some people. Now, from that, we're going to get a hundredfold return. <laughs> Oh, you see, you can't convince me otherwise. I've had two full years of living without the church support, living supernaturally on this earth. God meeting our needs, praise God. Reach over and touch somebody and say, this faith stuff really works, Ethel. All right, look at verse 16. I've got to finish this. And they answered Joshua saying, oh, Jesus, time going by. All that thou commandest we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest we will go, according as we hearken unto Moses and all things so, will we hearken unto thee, only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whoever he be that doth rebel against your commandment and will not hearken unto your words all that you command him, he'll be put to death. We'll kill that sucker. Only... Aren't you glad you're not living under the old covenant right now? Yeah. See, you know, have you ever, has anybody, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I've whined. Has anybody besides me whined or right? You'd be dead now if you lived under the old covenant. So he says, only be strong and be courageous. Amen? See, the people who are above the age of 20, they died in the wilderness because of their slavery mentality. They died there. They could not possess their promised land because of the slavery mentality. They weren't able to get what Joshua was able to get. 
But the people under Joshua's command was the people under 20 years of age who had not, not developed their subconscious mind fully yet. When you get to be the age of 20, you've almost completely developed your subconscious. How I many know what your subconscious mind is for? Do you know what it's for? It's for you acting and reacting without you consciously being aware of it. It's a pattern of action. It's a pattern of living. You've developed that by the age of 20. Those over 20, no water. Dad, gummit. What's that? Poor slavery mentality in their subconscious mind. And it's governing their actions and it's governing their words. Those under 20 were able to listen to Joshua and Caleb. And when it came time for the old critters and they died out and they were to go take their promised land, the ones under 20, they told them, we can do it. Because they listened to Joshua, Caleb, teach them. Teach them 40 years in the wilderness. Teaching them. Teaching them. Glory to God. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Why were they able to say that to Joshua? Because they too, like Joshua, had been delivered from a slavery mentality. Amen. Don't expect to take your promised land going, oh, poor me. <laughs> There's some people I think they've been, they, th they think they've been anointed by God to whine. <laughs> You know what? This is a miracle of God. I feel like I've been preaching for hours. And it's st I still got three minutes. <laughs> I know everything stops at 12. <laughs> Are you ready? Joshua 3, real quick, and I'm going to quit. Tell me, so some of you may be thinking, my God, is he ever going to quit? I really don't want to, but I'm going to. Now, these ministers up here probably know what I'm talking about, but you get under the type of anointing I have on me right now to teach, you don't ever want to walk out of it. I told my church one time, one of these days, I'm going to preach for three hours. And if you go to sleep, I'm going to have potatoes up here. And I'm going to throw them at you. I'll get right upside the head. <laughs> What's that? Wake up, potato head. This word is so important. How dare you get sleepy? Well, you don't understand. I'm tired. I'm tired. My eyes are droopy. Grab your eyelashes right now. Hold them up, man. Listen, this is important. You ready? Joshua 3, verse 5. Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders, wonders, wonders among you. Amen. Lift your hands towards heaven. Lift your hands towards heaven. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. Just praise him and thank him. The same statement that Joshua said to his people, the Lord has instructed me to tell you, to sanctify yourselves. Learn to become loyal, faithful, courageous, obedient, and committed to God's word and never compromise the word of God. Because the Lord our God wants to do wonders among you and with you. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want, I want this to become contagious. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shake up, 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 up,
God, you are rich in mercy. Your, your glory endureth forever. Your anointing and mercy and grace endures forever. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Come on, just worship God. Come on, come on, come on. If you want to know what I'm doing in, in another language, I'm praising God. I'm not trying to get somebody to interpret. I'm, I'm praising God in, in my own language. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord because He's good and His mercies endure forever. Praise the Lord for His grace. Praise the, I'm standing in His grace. Standing in His grace. Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. Joint heirs with Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. 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 Lokoto po lokoto rofu rokoto keda pasto ko. Ngar me re re le bosur be re re le bara na na na. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesha ka pato ko ro 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 ma. Jesus is Lord. Ha 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 ha. Sata da re re ko ro ro. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Linda, I'm just going to obey God. Come here. You don't need to know what's going on in her, but the enemy's tried to attack her life, and it ain't going to happen. And I've told her a while ago that every time I sensed this type of anointing, I was going to lay hands on her. Pastor John, would you please come up? You other pastors. <coughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to say the one thing, Linda. Father, I, I command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the authority given to me by the Word of God, I claim and say that the irregular heartbeat yes. is repaired yes. and healed. I call her healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey, Strength is coming back into her body. Thank you, Lord, for correcting it. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, everybody, just keep praising God. Oh, Harabat had it in a kiss it and a lot of Thank you, Jesus. 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 King of glory. King of glory. King of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I supply all of your need, including healing, according to coming forth from my riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Am I still on? I, I want you to listen to me, people. God is merciful and grace, full of grace. Thank you, Jesus. But the enemy of our life tries to destroy us and kill us. He tries to steal from you. And he has come against me earlier. I had gained weight and I found out the Lord spoke to me and told me I had an elbow problem. And the elbow kept doing this. So I put on a lot of weight and my heart was attacked. I'm doing really great right now and I've taken the weight off and Thank you, Jesus. keeping it off for years now. Thank you, Father. My heart is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's gonna be the same way with Linda if it's not even an immediate manifestation. She shall be restored to wholeness completely in Jesus' name because our ministry is not over, it's still to happen in Jesus' name. Latter years shall be greater. Thank you, Jesus. You got something? I just, uh, Linda, look at me for just a moment. I heard the Lord say, Fear thou not, only. You know, I don't remember exactly how old I was. I think I was in my 40s. You know, sometimes, times, yeah, last couple of weeks ago. Anyway, I was, I was uh, in, in our home. Laura and I were living in, in our city. And uh, it was about midnight, and I was up shampooing the carpets in our house. And all of a sudden, like a tr freight train, I, everything began to just fade out in me. And Laura was standing down at the end of the hall, and she said, are you all right? And I just felt my life going from, from me. And she said, come here, lay down. So I laid down on, on the couch, and I heard the word of the Lord come up from deep on the inside of me. Because everything, it was fading. My life was gone from me. Life was fading. And I heard the word of the Lord, just a faint, still, small voice. And the Lord said, rebuke this from the depths of my soul Thank you, in the name of the Lord Jesus I command healing in this body and all of a sudden I felt the spirit of God come upon the inside of me got up finished shampooing the carpets and then about two months later I was lying we were laying in bed and all of a sudden this like it was like a freight train hit me once again and I mean I just I got out of bed, I crawled down the hallway in our house, 
and I, I, I literally crawled into, uh, and I sat up in this chair, and out of bated breath, and I said, Father, I'm your child. You've promised to heal me, and I am healed, and I thank you for it. I'm uh, just in July, I'm going to be 70 years old. I'm going to tell you something. The enemy is trying to cause you to fear, but do not fear. Only believe. You're going to live out your days. You're going to prosper. You're going to, you're going to fulfill the destiny. I'll tell you something. God has just start opening a new destiny, a new door in your lives. And you're going to live out your days. Your latter days will be better. They will be greater. They will be stronger and more influential and effectual than your latter days. In Jesus' name. I was um, here, I don't know, a few years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. And I remember ministering to Pastor Karen that the Lord was going to use her to bring healing to hearts. That's been on my heart all month for this particular service, these particular services. So when she laid hands on you, I saw that anointing going want to encourage you it went right in and it's doing the work right now so we can rejoice Hallelujah. I, um, I want to just close with this my part and I'm gone a little over two years ago almost three our church came under a tremendous attack and we've had people leaving like crazy and, uh, whoops, um, then he hit me with a heart problem. And through that and through the heart problem, he tried to get me developed in discouragement, yeah. tried to get me to become a whiner and a griper and a complainer. So instead, I isolated myself and went to the slopes with Joshua. And I have over the last two years been meditating on Joshua and so much more. But I knew that I had to develop his characteristics in order to win what I felt like was some dirty blows and a heart problem. Well, we've come through, and it's because Lynn and I have decided to stay on the slopes Amen. until we learn what we need to learn know what we this message has come about strictly from my time over the last two years meditating with God and saying okay what do we do how do we fix this I've come to find out pastor that God's not the problem if I've got a problem it's me more than anything else I don't even like to give credit to the devil if there's a problem that there's something wrong with Warren and so Lynn and I you know one of the prayers I do right now, I know I'm a, I'm a quiet individual and I don't look to talk to people. But one, one of my prayers right now, how many know that no matter how old you are, if you're willing, God can change you? Yeah. If you're willing. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to become this flamboyant little chatterbox, okay? <laughs> that, yeah, Monica is that. <laughs> We've had to tell her on trips, Monica, just shut up for a while. But what I want to say is that through this teaching, I'm learning to end all my prayers. I'm going to end it with you today. I want you to say it with me if you're willing. God, help me be a better person. It's important. I'm going to be 70 years old. That's old in some people, but man, it's not. It's really not. This prophecy that came to us has been so wonderful. Your latter years are going to be great. That, you know what that was all about? That was for me to have something to hold on to because I felt like at my age when this happened to us a few years ago, I thought about retiring. I thought about saying, 
take this job and shove it. <laughs> and everything else. But God just gently spoke to my heart and said, no warning. He said, I'd like you to come to the slopes and I want you to learn to be like Joshua. And I want, now the reason why I'm taking time with this because I want you to get this. If you learn to become like Joshua's and Caleb's, then no matter what he throws your way, you will be able to overcome it and you will be able to walk through it. And before, and before the dust completely settles, you're going to be better off than what you were when it first started. And that's what I'm believing God for, that Lynn and I, we're going to be better off than what we were when it first started. <laughs> you know what I think I'm going to probably wind up doing is, instead of being so quiet, I'm just going to turn into a cantankerous old man. <laughs> you come up to me and start whining, the first thing going to come out of my mouth, oh, get over yourself. <laughs> Quit your... Stinking whining. And start talking about who you are in Christ Jesus. I like to tell the people at church all the time, you're a winner. I got their emails and I'll write them a note. Sometimes at least once a week, just write them a note. You're more than a conqueror. You are a winner. You're an anointed. You're speaking the word. You're overcoming. You are a winner. I want that out in front of everybody. And so I'm proclaiming, I'm coming to do my part, and I don't feel like I've completed it quite yet. I want to say it again. You are a winner. No matter what it is that's come against you, you're going to come through this thing. You're going to make it through this thing. (sighs) I'm still young enough to where it's very, possible for me to be, be here when Christ comes. I was born in 48. You know what happened in 48? Israel became what? Yeah. Said uh, Jesus would be coming back before that generation passes away. Well, you guys better keep st- Linda's in my heart, keep it beating because I'm 48 years old and I'm going to keep this ticker going. Hallelujah be Jesus. Okay, I'm almost through. Ready? Put your hands up with me one more time. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins, my iniquities, my shortcomings, and my failures. Help me move forward, go to the mountainsides, and become a Joshua to my generation. Thank you, Father. Help me be a better person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Years and years ago, I heard a man of God by the name of Lester Summerall. He was an older man. He passed on probably, I don't know, gosh, in the early 2000s, late 90s. But he said this, and that this marked my spirit was marked with this, and I've never forgotten it. He said, your life is in three, three divisions or three sections. He says, you're... From the time you're born till you're around 30 are your learning years. From 30 on to around 60 or so are your doing years. And then from 60 on are the years where you take what you've learned and what you've obtained from God, both spiritually and naturally, and you turn, and as a spiritual mother or father, you give it back to the generations. You help teach them and you help bless them and bring them forward. And so the reason the devil wants to come after people, and some of you younger people might not understand this just yet, because I didn't when I was younger either, that the, the devil wants to take out the older people because he knows they're in their harvest season. Amen. You know, the, the world teaches you, oh, you know, once you're over 40, you're downhill from there, you know, and all that nonsense. And, it, and you, you do have to adjust to your body getting older and all that. But... God has given you that which you can turn around and give back. And that's the way it's in the scripture. That's what it is. Amen? Praise God. And so one of the very unique and wonderful things God's doing in this day and hour is he's going to take the generations and show them how to move together. But as I grew up, all I heard about generation gap, generation gap, generation gap. And uh, 
the gap caused a lot of problems. But God's bringing us together now. Amen? Praise God. You know, as, as Warren was closing, I heard the Lord say to me, I've brought you to a place. And have, he was saying this to all of us. I brought you to a place and I brought you to a time where things are going to change and it's going to come out fine. God's going to move and you're going to see him come from above and you're going to be able to walk in the power of his love. So don't give up and don't give in. Don't let the devil talk you into sin. But step up, says the Lord, and cross Jordan this day and you'll be able to walk in my Holy Ghost way. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand. Turn around and high-five somebody. Tell them you love them. And we'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Brother Bob Longen's going to be ministering. Come on back and be with us. Amen? Amen. God bless you.